Welcome fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and today we have my March wrap up. So I had one like really big success in March but I did not get all my books read which was a shame like if I had just not gotten to one of them it would have worked out fine but I ended up not getting to four of my books from my TBR game. Five books total that I didn't get to. Um, and the reason I say it's a shame is because I did get a honey on my mini game, which this allows me to discount one of the books. So if there was like just one book I didn't get to, um, I could have still gotten a reward, but since there was four books from my game I didn't get to, I don't get a reward. And if I had gotten multiple honeys, you know, it would have been multiple books that I could not count for my game, but it is what it is. My... March, we did have the Vegas trip, which was a dream of my mom's, you know, for her, us girls, her girls, and then my oldest sister's three daughters to go to Vegas once the youngest turned 21, um, which she did in January. And so we all went. My middle sister wasn't able to make it, but my aunt was, and she's always a good time. So it was a lot of fun. Um, but being autistic, it was also a lot for me. And so I'm still kind of recovering from the trip. Um, so I only read one book while we were in Vegas. And then this past week was just me kind of being very zoned out and my just not being able to read a whole lot. Um, but I still had a great month. I did end up getting 14 books read, which is fantastic. I did have some extras that got added on there. As far as stats go, I did read 4,687 pages. 12 of those were physical, two were digital. I did not have any audio books this month, so there was no audio hours. All 14 books were fiction. I did not have any nonfiction. Two were rereads. My top moods, as always, were adventurous, mysterious, and emotional. Genres, again, these can overlap, so even though it seems like there's more books for the genres, they overlap, so one book can fit multiple genres. We had six fantasy, four middle gro grade, four romance, four contemporary, three young adult, three historical, two children's, one classics, one science fiction, one mystery, one literary, and one horror. Uh, so yeah, not a bad month, just didn't get to everything I wanted. As always, we're going to kind of start from the books I did not get to and work our way up to the top rated book of the month. And then I also have my top three, which does not necessarily correspond to star rating. It's just the ones that made the biggest impact and kind of have kind of stuck with me. So first up, we have two books I did not get to and I am not rolling over. The first of which I had actually given myself two months for, but I'm just not feeling it. I don't want to read it in April either. And that is Dragonfly in Amber by Diana Gabaldon. This was for the um, Dumbo prompt of conservation or zoology. This will, of course, go back in the honey jar since I did not get to it. And it works for that because the author actually has degrees in those fields. Um, but yeah, I'm just not feeling it. I didn't fully love Outlander and it was such a dense long read. And one of the books I did get to has taken a lot of time and space in my life. And I have other chunky books that are coming up as well. So I'm just going to put this on the back burner for now until I'm feeling like it. And then I will continue the series. This was a series I did want to read this year. Um, most of them, if not all of them. But it's just not going to work out that way because they are so dense and I don't want to put myself in a burnout trying to force myself to read these. So this will be on my shelf when I am ready for it. So that's the first one I did not get to and I'm not going to be rolling over. The other one that I'm not going to be rolling over is going to be The Gilded Cage by Lynette Noni. This was for the prompt of... Um, Kangaroos are from Australia, so of course it's Kinga and Roo, which is a shame because I've had this one before and have not fulfilled the prompt. Like, I think I used the reward once, um, and so maybe next time I pull it, it will be fulfilled. But yeah, this one I know I'm going to read at some point sooner rather than later, so I don't want to force it into um, April because I already have a lot of books so this one's just gonna go back on the shelf for now as well then we have my genre-a-thon pick which it was March Madness to either read a psychological thriller 
or a dark romance. And again, I was planning on saving this for later in the month, but because of the Vegas trip, my brain just, I didn't feel like reading it. Um, but I am going to roll it over because I do want to fulfill my genre-thon. It's my own read-a-thon. Like, I want to fulfill the prompts. So that is The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. So I will be getting to this um, in April. So there is that one. Then we have one that I have started. Um, these next two are actually for my ABC title challenge, so I need to get them read. Uh, the first one is Going Local by Jamie Harrison. I'm only about 25. You can't even see the bookmark. I'm only about 25 pages in, um, so I have a long way to go. And this was for Puss in Boots, which was shoe or boot theme um, because it's a rodeo and cowboys and that always makes me think of cowboy boots. Uh, so that's kind of how I made that one work. So this one will be like my mandatory rollover. And so I will have to finish this one before I can start on any of my other books. But honestly, I think this first week I'm just going to focus on all my rollovers and see what I can get done. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go with this one for my mandatory rollover though. So I do need to finish this before I start on anything else. The other one for my ABC title challenge was How Hard Can It Be by Allison Pearson. This was for um, The Emperor's New Groove, and so it's a comedy. Um, and so, yeah, this one is another one I have to get ready because it's for my ABC title challenge. And in order to continue on with that challenge, I got to get these read. So I'll probably pick this one up right after I finish going local. So there's that one. Then, of course, we have my other rollover, which has been going on since November. You'll notice, though, there's only one because I did finish the one I've been reading since October. And we'll get into that. That was kind of the big success of the month. And so The Iliad and The Odyssey by Homer. I only read 14 pages of this this month. I would have definitely read more, um, but like I said, with Vegas and then not reading much that last week just didn't have the headspace for this so this will also continue to roll over but again this one I'm still gonna take my time with but I'm gonna try to at least read a chapter or so every day this month because I'm just not making much progress and now that the other book is finally off I think I can focus this a little bit more so those are all the rollovers now we have our star rating so one stars are any books I DNF'd um, again, I don't rate those on Goodreads or Storygraph because I don't think it's fair if I didn't actually read the book to rate it. But for the purposes of my journal, those are DNFs. I like just could not get through them. I didn't have any of those, so that's a win. I did have two two stars. The first one was for The Little Mermaid, which was a Deal with the Devil. And for this one, put that in the wrong spot. I chose Irish Johansson, Dark Summer. I really like I Irish Johansson's writing, and this has dogs, so I was thinking, oh yes, I'm going to love it. I did not love it, obviously. It only got two stars. I don't know. It Honestly, it was published in 2008, but it felt very dated, and it also just felt like it was maybe an earlier work of hers that she just published at this point. Um, like that had elements that I enjoy, like fast pace, you know, that kind of intrigue and like secret, um, not really societies, but like, like secret service type feel, um, like the M16 is in here and such. So it had those components of her other books but just was not well written i said it felt dated she the one is half apache the main male character is half apache and half spanish um and she keeps calling him a savage and like and not just like the unlikable characters like everybody is like oh you're a savage you're a half breed and so that felt dated and then at one point the main female character has a very abusive ex and it's after their first, you know, they make love the first time or whatever. Um, and they're kind of laying there and he goes, I can see why your ex wanted to put a baby in your belly. 
Like, it was just very, very cringy. She didn't really develop the characters at all. There was no development, no debt. So you didn't really... <laughs> I don't know what this dog's doing. What are you doing, baby? On a freeze. What you have to do? I don't know what's happening with the back there. <laughs> The animals are all freaking out. It's like a rainy day. They don't know what to do. Um, so anyway, so yeah, there was no really development. And with the main male character, I know she was trying to kind of create this like duplicity and these contradictions within him, but it, it just came across as inconsistent. Um, I think if she had developed it a little bit more, it might have worked. Um, but because she didn't, it just felt very, very inconsistent. And so, yeah, I just did not love this one, which is a shame because, like I said, she is one of my favorite authors. After I collected all my Nora Roberts books, I started working on collecting her, like, uh, thriller suspense books. And this one was more like romantic suspense. With a lot of hers don't really have that romance element. Um, and I know she started off as a romance author. But, yeah, it just it fell short. Um, which is a shame because you have these dogs and they have like this special ability. And so that's the whole premise is you have like this high powered guy who's trying to get at these dogs and get at this main male character. Um, and the main female character is a vet and they're on like a search and rescue and the dog gets shot. And so she ends up getting pulled in to all the danger and craziness and such. And then, like I said, you have like this guy from M16 who's working with them um, and so that kind of it was originally her kind of making a deal like going along with him even though she didn't fully trust him and such but it also worked for deal with the devil because he was working with this M16 guy who wasn't fully on the up and up either um, so yeah just a little bit disappointing but it was an interesting premise I just wish it had been done a little bit better so there is that one. Next, the other one I had was for Elsa and Anna, which was Frozen or Cold Landscape. And for this one, I chose The Babysitter's Winter Vacation by Anne and M. Martin. This is one of the super special editions, which is number three in that um, part of it. And yeah, just not the greatest written the editing wasn't a great, wasn't done very well. Um, pop culture references, which are a pet peeve of mine. I didn't think they made sense, but talking to my husband, he's like, yeah, like they made sense. Um, because like some of the pop culture references was The Shining, the movie though, The Shining based on, of course, a book by Stephen King. And then, like, I Love Lucy. This was written in, like, 1989. Um, and I didn't think that made sense for middle girl graders, but my husband's like, no, like, because a lot of parents and grandparents would have on TV land and would watch I Love Lucy. Because um, he's seven years, six, five years older than me. I don't know. <laughs> he's five years older than me, so he was a little bit older at this point, I was, like, two. Um, he wasn't quite middle grade then, but... Uh, so he's like, no, and, like, kids would sneak out while their parents were watching a scary movie and such. But to me, it didn't make sense. I guess I had a more innocent childhood, and I didn't see scary movies, or, you know, we didn't have the old TV on either. So, um, so some of the pop culture references I didn't think worked. My husband thought was fine, so maybe it was just a me thing. I hate pop culture references anyway. And then there was some editing issues, and there was two lines that didn't really make sense. Um, I had somebody commented, because this is one of the ones I read for my honey um, bingo game, and I mentioned it there, and somebody commented that it did make sense, so maybe it's just my brain. My husband said it was fine but it didn't really work and that was like a line it was like there was pretty many kids there already um and I just didn't think the pretty made sense there was another one that I couldn't find I was kind of glancing back through to see if I could find it and I didn't find it um but I know there was another line that the words just didn't make sense together um and so yeah that was dropped it down for me a little bit and then 
kind of, I think it's Marianne and her obsession with her boyfriend, which, I mean, at that age, you are a little boy crazy, I guess. So it was fine. Not the greatest. I still plan on reading. I've never actually read the series. I've seen the show a bit. Um, I've never read the series and I've been collecting them. So I still plan on reading like the other series, but this one just didn't really work for me overall. So there's that one. And then we had, um, two, three stars. And first up is the big success of the month. And that was Shogun by James Clavell. I actually ended up forcing myself to finish this because of my Honey Bingo game. Um, I got the longest book on my TBR, and even though I had started this, I only had like over 400 pages left to go. Uh, this is was the longest book on my TBR technically because it's 1,152 pages, and I finally finished it. It did take me, you know, I read it a couple days before going to Vegas, and then when I got back from Vegas, it took me like three more days. It's just so dense. Like each day I didn't really read more than 60 pages and that was pushing myself. I think the last two days I read 70 pages each. But yeah, it's just so dense. And this one, so it's very crude at points, which kind of got under my skin and that was fine. Um, but it did kind of get under my skin. So I didn't love that. Political books really aren't my thing um so there was that aspect too but I was kind of invested like the writing is very immersive and so I was kind of invested but the ending literally wraps up in two tiny paragraphs and I'm like all that build up for that the romance also that's in here like I see why he did it but with the show like I want to watch the show and I've been seeing articles and such and the original, like, things he's basing this book off of, there was never the woman and the man he's basing these characters off of never met or anything like that. And I see why he developed a romantic relationship between them for the sake of the story and how it played out. But I really wish he either hadn't done that or he had developed it more. Um, because that whole thing just didn't work. And it was cringy at times. Like, there was times when they would be talking about, like, because she's his translator, essentially. Um, and kind of him, the way he's learning the culture and everything. And so there was times they would be in the middle of conversation and then they would switch to Latin. And I love the you thou. And it was just a little bit cringy. And there was times when it was, like, a female perspective, like, one of the other ladies in particular, I'm thinking of this cringy moment, and she's like, oh, how my loins stir, and, you know, I want to be with this man, or whatever, but just the way she said it, it's like, women don't think like, though it felt very much like a man writing woman, which in this case it was, um, so there's just kind of moments like that as well, and like I said, that ending just pissed me off, <laughs> so it Probably if, like, more political, historical things are your... I like historical. I do like historical reads. But the political aspect um, and maybe the crudeness and such wouldn't bother you. Is the writing's probably a higher rating, but just for me personally, dropped it down and there were some issues. I would say it's probably more of a four-star based on the writing, but because of the issues I had with it, it got a three star for me, but it's finally done. Yay. So I'm so happy um, that I got it read. I'm not continuing on. This is like a whole saga, the Asian saga. I will not be continuing on. My husband has whirlwind, um, but no, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm done. This was enough. I read it because my, my husband got this when we were dating. And so I finally started it in October for him. I promised him I would. And it's finally read. So yay, the big win of the month for sure. And then the other three star is um, Barbarian's Touch by Ruby Dixon. This is actually the one I ended up taking to Vegas and reading while I was in Vegas. So that was fun. Um, and this one was for Peter Pan, which is mermaids or water creature. Because there are different water creatures in here. Um, and this one enjoyable just like they all are I loved that it had the deaf representation I was a little bit worried and this might be a little bit spoilery so if you're worried about that just jump ahead but it did have the deaf 
representation and with the queens you know they can heal and such that's part of what the queens do um in their body and i was a little worried it was going to heal her deafness it didn't fully do that in this book but there was moments towards the end where it would reference like oh her ears were popping or things like that i really hope as we continue the series that that doesn't happen um i think you know with disability rep like magically healing her i don't know i just find that cringy like i i don't like it but it didn't do that but it had the potential to do that um and yeah this one was fine it just didn't have like really a good pace with the plot or anything it did seem to plot along a little bit um and so that's kind of what dropped it down a little bit for me um but I did like the deaf representation. I liked the two characters together overall. Um, because basically she gets kidnapped by a different member of the tribe who's trying to do, to, you know, force residents and such. And so this uh, alien she ends up with ends up coming to save her. But if you're not familiar with the Ice Planet Barbarian series, it's basically this group of women get sex trafficked by aliens they have issues with their ship and ends up dropping their human cargo on this ice planet and then you have these big blue guys um and in order to survive on the planet they end up with this queen which is a symbiote life force um which helps them survive on the planet but they want you know to procreate and so they end up resonating to their mates um and so yeah they're very like cozy fun reads um and i did enjoy this one it just didn't quite have a good path pacing of the plot so there is that one then let's see here we had three four star reads and first up i'm a little disappointed this wasn't higher but it just didn't work that way and this one was for encanto and it was house prominent and so for this one, I went with Thistlefoot because, of course, you have a house on Chicken Lake and it's sentient. It's a very prominent. So basically in this one, you have the Yaga siblings and they inherit this house. Like they're kind of estranged a little bit. The brother has, you know, left home and has just been off on his own. Um, and so they inherit this house. And so there's like a puppet show aspect. Their parents used to have a puppet show and they decide to go on the road with this house. And this puppet show but there's also this shadow man that has come and followed the house to america and so they're having to kind of figure that out um and i did really enjoy i didn't particularly like the brother but i really like the sister she has like some anxiety and such they kind of have these extra abilities as well um and so they're you know kind of figuring that out like they the brother knows more about his abilities than the sister does. She's kind of suppressed it. Um, and so they have this puppet show. Of course, there's people that come in as well along the way. And what didn't work for me, like, it's kind of disjointed, which was fine at first. Like, it's kind of creating this little mi a mystery, especially about the brother and where he's been all these years. But the author tried to develop a romance with the sister, which just didn't work. I wish she had just left that alone. And then with the brother, there's kind of this mystery about this event that happened, why him and his sister have been apart. And so there's all this buildup and mystery. And then when you get to the event, it's just kind of let you down. <laughs> um, and it didn't really make sense, like his feelings and such didn't make sense for the way the event played out. Uh, and so I just wish that had been done differently, but overall I really liked it. You know, it's based on the lore of Baba Yaga and you have this house on chicken legs and you kind of go back and forth between the siblings and then this house is telling like the history as well of, and the house is kind of an unreliable narrative. He's giving you kind of different histories of to how he came to be and such. And it does deal with like Jewish persecution and um like uh russian history as well um and i think it was when the red and white factions were warring 
Uh, and so there was that component as well. And so, yeah, it was very interesting. Like I said, I just wish that the author hadn't necessarily done the romance and had handled that event the, the brother was dealing with a little bit differently. I don't mind unlikable characters if it makes sense for the character, and it did in this case, but I just didn't like that whole aspect. So that got four stars, though. It was really interesting, and I did enjoy it overall. Then we had... Um, let's see here. This was for Mowgli, and it was Bare Necessities. And so for this, I decided to go with A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams. I actually got this uh, from a Goodreads giveaway. This is the first thing I've won from a Goodreads giveaway. So I knew I wanted to read it sooner rather than later, and I couldn't get it on in February. That's when I won it. And so I decided to put it on for March. And this is my first time reading Tia Williams. This had a lot of pop culture references as well, but for the most part it worked. It just ended up taking it too far and that's kind of what dropped it down to me. But for the most part it did work because it deals with like the Harlem Renaissance and such. So basically you have Ricky and she's from like this corporate family that has a bunch of funeral homes and such. And she just never really fits into high society or anything like that. And so she wants to go move to Harlem and open a flower shop. Well, I don't think she wants to move to Harlem. She wants to open a flower shop and she meets somebody and it allows her to move to Harlem. And so you kind of have the dual timelines with the Harlem Renaissance and such. And she's, you know, discovering the city and the history and, and everything. Um, and then she meets a man, but he kind of has a secret. And so it's kind of their love story. And I really liked it. And like I said, you have a lot of pop culture references around like jazz and such. And that really worked. There were some that were just clever. Like if you knew, you knew. And if you didn't, you know, it just kind of rolled off your back. But like I said, it kind of went a little too far. And there's just some that it was just like really there was one though that was just funny and it really made me laugh out loud and it was she was asking her friend was asking her whether she was a Beyonce or a Rihanna and there's an elderly lady that's the one that's kind of allowed her to move to Harlem kind of like a fairy godmother and a found grandmother and such <laughs> so I like that there was an older lady in here. Like, I really like when there's multi-generational friendships or, you know, storylines and such. And so, anyway, she's like, she wants to be involved in their conversation, but she doesn't really know who they're talking about. And instead of Rihanna, she's thinking Tiana, the Disney princess, and she's, she's talking about how, you know, that poor girl had to work so hard and then she had to kiss a frog. And so they start laughing because it's like, no, not Tiana, Rihanna. And so that was funny. Like, there were moments with the pop culture references that really worked and were funny and clever. But like I said, just went a little too far with it. But overall, I really did enjoy the writing. I definitely plan on trying this author again. Um, I would love to read Seven Days in June for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm glad this one came up. I won it and I was able to read it. Uh, so yeah, it was definitely the kind of mystery element. Um, I enjoyed uh, kind of, there's kind of like this curse aspect to it. And just really, really enjoyable overall. Like I said just those pop culture references. I know that doesn't bother everybody, but it just, it bugs me. Um, so even though it was pretty clever, this next one also had a lot of pop culture references. And I debated between these two because I thought that one was done better. Um, but I preferred the story of this one, and so that's why this one got just a smidge higher. They're both four stars, obviously, and that's The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. This one was an extra one I ended up picking up for my Honey Bingo game, because I think it was Story Goodreads or Story Graphs or Instagram or something like that. One of the platforms that I needed to find a book from. And so I ended up picking The Dead Romantics, and I enjoyed the story of this one 
but I honestly, this was kind of a roller coaster of a ride because I almost DNF'd it in the first 25 pages because of all the pop culture references. And then I thought, no, like stick it out. Um, and then I was thinking, well, maybe it's a two star, like it's, it's fine. I can get through this. Um, and it would have been a five star if it wasn't for all those pop culture references. So basically you have Florence and she's a ghostwriter and she meets her new editor f for the person she's ghostwriting for. And he's like, you have this deadline. Well, her dad ends up dying and so she has to go back to her hometown and then he ends up showing up as a ghost. Um, she is able to see ghosts and talk to ghosts and such. Um, and so that's part of the reason why she hasn't been to her hometown for a while is because people, you know, she was bullied for it and whatnot. Um, and yeah, I just love the story. It deals a lot with grief. You know, she's processing the loss of her dad. And then it's such a slow burn romance because he's a ghost and he's, you know, she's like trying to help him and he's helping her kind of process this grief. And so it's such a slow burn romance and it was just so good. Like I loved everything about it except those pop culture references. Um, it does have LGBTQ plus representation in here. And yeah, I was just, I just, why? <laughs> why with the pop culture? Um, and with as heavy as the pop culture references were, I don't know that I would be willing to try this author Again, like I said, with Tia Williams, it was clever for the most part. With this one, it was just, you were bombarded with it. So I'm not sure. I love the story so much, but I think it was the story. So I'm just not sure that I'm interested enough in some of the other things she's written um, to try it. But if I, like, happen to come across, I'm thinking of the seven-year slip. If I happen to come across it, I might pick it up. But I'm not going to go search it out. Like, it was so heavy with the pop culture references. So there is that one. Next, we are up to our five stars, which we had seven five stars, which is fantastic. Um, and so the first one is actually a digital. And that was Ways to Be Me by Libby Scott and Rebecca Westcott. And so this was... For Autism Reads, this was a pick for this month. It is a middle grade, and we had actually read the first one in the series, I think, last year for Autism Reads, and that's put on by Christine at An Autistic Reader. There's a Discord and everything, and every month we are reading a different book. This year we're reading books by authors who, excuse me, authors who are autistic, um, and so, yeah, we read this one for this month, and this is a prequel to the series, and so it's before she has her diagnosis, and I just really, really enjoyed it. So, right off the bat, there was, like, a horse element, her and her friend get a gift of a horse lesson from their moms. Um, and so they're going to this horse lesson and she's really connecting to the horse and everything. And the horse is a little bit feisty and not as lovable as some of the other horses. And I really liked how that was presented and kind of the lesson, like just because she's a little bit different from the other horses, like she's still lovable in her own right. So I liked how that was presented. There is also two other autistic characters. One is the owner of the horse place. The other is the um somebody she goes to school with but he's a, a boy and so he his autism does present very differently from hers and so I like that because a lot of women in particular are diagnosed later than males who have autism because it does present differently uh so I really like that component I like kind of the family dynamic of them trying to like support her but showing that it, it is hard on the family as well. Um, I just liked all the different components and so yeah I found it really really enjoyable um, and there's also kind of lessons about you know things she does and like whether like you're not necessarily bad because you do this um, you're struggling, but there's also the other side where she does some things and it's like, you can't use your autism as an excuse for that. Like, that's not okay. Um, and you just, you need to know right from wrong as well. So 
I really like that dynamic as well. Like overall, very, very well done. And I like how she processed it. Because when I got my diagnosis, obviously I was already in my 30s. And it was a relief. Like, and with her, with the character Tally, she was upset by her diagnosis because she didn't want to be labeled different. Like, and then her parents kept trying to explain it's not a bad thing. It's just now we know that this is what's going on and we know we can put things in place to help you with your struggles. And so I wonder if I had gotten my diagnosis when I was, you know, middle school age how my response would have been a little bit different um because I definitely really wanted to fit in and such so it just was really interesting the way she processed it and kind of the differences there next up we have Harry Potter and the, the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling this was for my character pick we got a uh, piglet which is an auto by author or a reread I believe I know it's a reread um, because that's what I use this for. Yeah, auto by author or reread. And so I went with the reread route because I've been working on the Harry Potter series since the end of last year. Um, and yeah, this one is the one that had the elves in it. So like this view, like she's trying to elf rights and such. And I remember as a kid, I didn't particularly enjoy that. Um, but the storyline in this one, because it has the Triwizard Tournament and such. I think the plot and the story of this one's a lot better than some of the other ones. And I, you know, you kind of have the before and the after, if you know, you know. And so this is kind of, you still kind of have that innocent aspect. You know, they're in school. Yes, there's danger and such, but they're still kind of innocent. And then you have the aftermath and, you know, they have to kind of grow up a little bit fast. Um, so yeah, I really, I think this is definitely my favorite. It's my favorite movie for sure, which is funny because my husband does not like this movie. It's his least favorite movie, but it's my favorite movie and I just really enjoyed it. I like the Triwizard Tournament, you know, the different, um, challenges they're having to face and such and just really, really enjoyed it overall. So there is that one. Then we have, let's see here, another digital read, which was, Autism Reads book for last month that I didn't end up getting to and that's A Thousand Perfect Notes by C.G. Drews and this one I really like kind of a darker tone to this one it is young adult but basically you have the main character I believe his name is Beck I want to say I'm horrible with names so don't hold me to that um and him and his little sister live with their mom who has some health issues she used to be like a uh, successful pianist and had some health issues and now can no longer play um, professionally and so she teaches piano and she's basically has her she wants Beck to be a successful pianist um, but she's very abusive and so like he has to play from when he gets up, he goes to school, and then he when he gets home, he has to start playing. And he's trying to protect his little sister from kind of the same thing, like keep the focus on me, keep the abuse on me to protect his little sister. So it's very, very dark. Definitely check the trigger warnings. Um, but I really like kind of the layout how you're in this character's head. It's very much his thoughts. It's also kind of a coming of age, his first love. Because he ends up getting paired up with this girl for a school assignment. And she's kind of quirky and different as well. Um, she Her family rescues animals. So I like that component because, of course, I'm a huge animal lover. Uh, and, yeah, I just really kind of like that darker tone. Really, really enjoyed it. Next up, we have the first book I read of the month. And this was for the prompt of... Um, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and it was Persecuted People. And for this, I chose Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children from Ransom Riggs. And I originally chose this one because you have a bunch of peculiar children and peculiar photographs. These are real historical photographs, which I thought was really cool. And the story is kind of based around these photographs which I found really, really interesting. I know I read some reviews where people didn't fully love that, but I personally loved it and found it really, really interesting. And so basically you have, I forget the characters again, 
Um, uh, let's see. So you have 16 year old Jacob. Um, and his grandfather is kind of like all timery. Um, and so, and he's always told like these outlandish stories and nobody really believed him. Um, and he ends up like kind of going off again and something happens to him. And so Jacob ends up really struggling. Um, and his therapist is like, you know, go over to where your grandfather was, um, where this home was that he talks about and, you know, kind of find closure essentially and so he goes um but these children may still be there and so there does deal with a portal which I thought I didn't know that um so it's kind of like portal it's not really fully fantasy it's more magical realism um but yeah so you're dealing with like these peculiar children and he's learning the history and his father you know what is Jewish they're Jewish and so you got that persecution from that aspect as well. Um, and so it's kind of interesting because they're thinking, you know, his father was in the war and had to leave his home and everything. And so they're thinking, like, he made up these stories to help him cope with that. But then you're learning that maybe they weren't stories. And so it's really, really cool how it's done. And I really enjoyed it. It's not really an alternate history um, because it's more fantastical. But it sort of is. Um, so basically you have these, you know, the war and such and what happened to these children. And then you have this portal that plays a part and like the magical aspect that plays a part into it. And so I just really, really enjoy this. I do have the second one. So I'm looking forward to getting to that hopefully soon. Uh, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Obviously gave it five stars. So there's that one. Then let's see here. We had another extra book and this was for Kim from, uh, tells or from expedition through pages for tales from two trails game. Um, I'm on team B and this was the group read and it worked for one of the prompts for fire belly toad. And so I got this and I read it and I really, really enjoyed this. Obviously, again, five stars. I don't know. Like, I know they have another book and then they have, like, writings that are part of, like, collections and such, like maybe essays or something. Um, but they have one other book. And I don't know that I love the writing enough that I would enjoy another book by this author. But in this case, I really enjoyed this book. I liked how it was formatted. So basically, you have two sisters. They do not know about each other. They're from different village, but they share the same, um, I think, father or mother. I think they... I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, the two sisters, they don't know about each other. They live in different villages. One ends up marrying a captain um an English captain and so she's at this castle as the wife of the English captain the other ends up being taken on a raid on her village and being sold into slavery and so each chapter you're going back and forth between the two sisters uh family lines and each one's a different generation so it's first them then their children and then their grandchildren and it just goes down um, down the line until basically present day and I really liked how it was formatted I thought that was it was it was very similar to like just collections of short stories but they're all interconnected and so you're getting the story of this family line of the history of slave trade and everything like that and I just found it really really interesting I liked how that was done uh and so yeah I just really enjoyed it overall um I like it, that historical aspect of the slave trade and everything like that. And like I said, the fan, the generational line was fantastic. So that got five stars as well. Then we have, this was an extra book. I needed a children's or middle grade. And I still had two middle grades. I still had Ways to Be Me and the next book I'm going to talk about. But I want to say Ways to Be Me since it was digital for Vegas. And... The other one I'm going to talk about was for the Start and Stop Buddy Read that Allison on a Book Break books puts on. Um, and so that one I need to take my time with. So I did myself a favor and I've been thinking about this. So I chose Heckity Peg by Audrey and Don Wood. This is a children's picture book. So of course it was super easy to read. And this book, I <laughs> in elementary school, every time our class went to the library, I grabbed this book. 
every time. Like, I, I was obsessed with this book. And as an adult, I can really appreciate it. The artwork is absolutely just stunning. So basically, you have this witch, Heckity Peg, and you have this mom with seven children. Each is named after a different day of the week. And she goes to go to market, and she asks the children what she wants, or what each one wants, rather. And... Then while she's gone, she has two rules. They end up breaking both rules and let this witch heckity peg in. She turns them into food and then takes them away and she's going to have herself a feast. Um, the mom comes home, finds her children missing. A bird, a little birdie tells her that her children got taken by this witch, turned into food. So she goes and she has to, in order to break the curse or the spell that's on them, she has to determine which child is which food, and it all ties back to what they asked for at the market, which I think was just very clever. Um, and like I said, the artwork is absolutely stunning. A childhood favorite. I reread it when I first started my channel, and then like I said, I've been thinking about it recently, and so it was an easy choice to pick up, and plus it helped me, you know, get something read really quickly. And then the last book, the last five star, my favorite of the month, was A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. And this was the pick for Allison's Start and Stop by Read, as I mentioned. Um, and so, yeah, I read this the last week. I just, you know, read to each stop at what, every day. This was so cleverly written. Like, it was really, really well done. So basically, you have these three sisters. The narrative is around Betty. And then you have uh, Fliss, and Charlie is the youngest. And so she's the, kind of the narrator. And basically, you have these three sisters, and they're stuck on this island, basically, Crowstone. And there's a curse, and there's magical items. And so there's, you know, the dual timeline. You're learning the history of this, where the curse kind of originated from and everything like that. And then they're having to try to figure out how to break this curse. This was so good. Like I said, it was very cleverly written. Like all the little connections, like something would be mentioned and then it would connect to something later on, which was really well done. Uh, and it was just a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. It definitely felt a little darker and more mature than I would think for a middle grade. Um, but it's also written, you know, like you can tell it's for a middle grade audience as well. But it's so enjoyable. Like any age, I think, could really enjoy the series. Uh, it is a series, so I definitely plan on continuing the series. I can't wait. It's interesting, though, because it fully wrapped up. Like this book fully wrapped up. So I'll be really interested to see um, where the series goes from here. Because you don't even get an inkling um, about what the next book will be about because uh, this one just wraps up so nicely but yeah this is definitely my favorite of the month so there's that one lastly we just have the top three as always so i'll start from number three which is miss peregrine's home for peculiar children by ransom riggs uh, i just really like the photography element i thought that was really really good i like how the story kind of he took these real photographs and created a story around them. That was just fantastic. The historical aspect, I really enjoyed as well. I love books that deal with history, obviously. I think all of my top three have that historical component. I love the found family aspect because you have these peculiar children and they don't have anybody else and so they have that found family aspect. And I like the portal slash magical aspect of it as well. Number two is Homegoing by Yagayasi. I just like the formatting. Like I said, each chapter following a different generation and going down the family line, I thought the formatting was fantastic. I love the generational and family aspect. Like, I always like that in books. Um, that's something I typically really enjoy. The history of the slave trade. Like, I liked, and you're following, you know, from when it was at its height and all the way down. And then the African setting. Like, I like that that setting. And then top one is actually Shogun by James Clavell. I mean, it took me six months to read. It definitely lives in my head right now. I like the immersive writing. I thought the writing really did pull you in when you weren't reading it or when I wasn't reading it. I was thinking about the book. Uh, so it definitely was very immersive and definitely pulled me in. Uh, again, the historical aspect, I really did enjoy that. 
I like the Japanese setting and culture. Now, I not very familiar with Japanese culture, and I did see a review that said that it wasn't very accurate as far as the culture goes, so I don't know, but I like kind of that different perspective. And then the political intrigue, even though I really don't like political reads, I I was very intrigued. Like, I was definitely pulled in and was like, what's gonna happen? Uh, so yeah, that's what made it the top book as far as impact of the month. And that is it it. So overall, pretty good month. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you're interested in any of these now that I've talked about them, what your favorite book from March was. I would love to know that down in the comments below. If you just want to let me know you were here and you don't have anything else to say, you can always leave either a rabbit or any animal emoji down in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.